I apologize for only reading two verses of the Bible <clears throat> and put a whole message on two verses. This week I've got three verses. So mm -hmm. if last week's message was 45 minutes long, you can proportionally have a look at what three verses would be as opposed to two and then work out how many for you. I know that the chicken's going to burn in the oven or the turkey or whatever else you're having on that side. But we're going to read Galatians <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 26 to 29, an exciting discovery for Mother's Day. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you, all, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. That's where we are. <coughs> That's got nothing to do with mothers, by the way. <laughs> I see uh, what's happened to my lady, that Caitlin, she disappeared. Okay, well, I said she's either going to fall asleep. Can anybody tell me what that is? Okay, all right, so I can teach you something this morning. Oh, I love it when I can teach you something. In the Reader's Digest, some years ago, there was a story of a man who wanted to give his wife a special gift on Mother's Day. He wanted the gift to be unique, something he had discovered himself. In an antique shop, he found a pair of Hames tips. Doesn't mean anything to any of you, eh? Those devices that look rather like brackets that fit on a collar, <coughs> on a horse collar, to hold the reins. That's what they are. Maybe old-fashioned, maybe not modern ones. They've probably got um, iPads and things that hold them <laughs> on now. I don't know. That's, you know, that type of stuff. He took them home. He polished them up. He filled them with flowers and presented them to his wife on Mother's Day. It wasn't a new BMW or a uh, Toyota Etios sedan or something like that. He had made a great discovery. The key is that he made his discovery his gift to her. That was the key to it. So you've learned something this morning. Take a picture of those things and see how we go. Here is another exciting discovery for Mother's Day. Believe it or not, a mother is a person. Okay, now I'm trying to give you big discoveries today. Mothers are often viewed primarily according to their function as family members. But mothers are persons. Persons with feelings, with rights and privileges. This should not be a revolutionary discovery. Paul made the same observation a long, long time ago. He was arguing for spiritual unity. The Greeks divided people into two classes. Shame on you, Liz. Two classes. <laughs> Greeks and barbarians. So I guess I was a barbarian. <laughs> and the Jews, they did the same thing. And they divided the whole world into Jews, and I fall into this category again, Gentiles. So it's simple, you know, Greeks and barbarians and Jews and Gentiles. Then there was the category of woman. A wife was the property of her husband. Her status ranked with slaves and children. In every respect, a woman was inferior to a man. I don't believe that's Okay, well, then I'll go down that route. <laughs> but Christ changed that. Christ changed that. Becoming a Christian, of course, does not mean that one ceases to be a male or a female. It does not, or it does mean, however, that gender does not alter one's relationship to Christ in any way. Each of us, male or female, father or mother, boy or girl, stands in a relationship to Christ by faith. And we have a unity through our faith. 
And this discovery helps in preaching a Mother's Day sermon. It is hard to be realistic in a Mother's Day sermon. It seems strange, but it is. If a preacher is not careful, it may sound as though he's talking about superwoman. <laughs> and then mothers leave discouraged because they know that they are not like that. But if, if we accept the exciting discovery that mothers are persons, a Mother's Day sermon need not be sentimental and idealistic. The sermon can inspire rather than idolize. This is what this Mother's Day sermon is designed to do. Alice Lee Humphreys, a teacher, tells of, vis tells of a visit to a home of a very poor student. In an effort to divert attention from the poor surroundings of which the student seemed conscious, she mentioned the smells coming from the kitchen and asked if her mother was the cook. The little girl replied that she was the lady what cooks. Her mother was a lady. What she did was she cooked. That little girl was able to separate the person from the function. And taking this discovery for Mother's Day, that a mother is a person who functions in a family as a mother. Notice some of the positive things a mother can do for her family. A mother gives, firstly, affirmation. She can affirm each person as an individual. Asserting her own individuality, a mother can help others affirm and assert their individuality. This can have a life-changing effect on persons. Jesus showed this when he had the encounter with the woman at the well in John 4. Remember the story? Huh? The Samaritan woman at the well, when the, when the disciples had gone into town to pick up some Kentucky and Nando's and bring it back to eat, Jesus was left at the well. Remember? I'm just modernizing the story. <laughs> Otherwise you say, what are they going to go? Where were the shops in those days? People made their own bread. Well, there were always people that had extra so they could buy and feed. And that woman was totally lost when she found Jesus. The other thing that we know that each person is unique and irreplaceable. And a mother can affirm that truth. Alfred Lukock reminds us that the mother of John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, had 19 children. Just a few. Okay. She had more than our whole Sunday school put together. <laughs> So when that family came to church, the Sunday school flourished. If the family decided to go fishing for the day, which I'm sure they never did, um, then, you know, nobody was in the Sunday school. There was a large family, even in those days. And even for a competent mother such as Susanna Wesley, very large family, he humorously suggested that she got their clothes mixed up from time to time. But more seriously, do you imagine she ever got them mixed up? The kids we're talking about. <laughs> it's bad enough when you've got three. Yeah. Oh, what's their name again? <laughs> Can't remember. Imagine 19. Eh? Oh, it's a whole class. Did Samuel sort of fade into John? And was Charles a misty blend of both? Would she have cared little if one of them had slipped out of her life? finding ready comfort in the fact that she had 18 left. If you have any doubt about it, you must read her letters that she wrote to her children. Each one held his or her own individual place that none of the other, not all 18 together, could fill. <coughs> That's a mother. That's superwoman. Okay, but we won't go. I want to make people into superwoman. Yeah. A mother gives inspiration. That's something that we see. She can give inspiration for spiritual development. You will go to church, otherwise you'll get a thick ear. Spiritual <laughs> development. 
Don't make any other arrangements on Sunday morning. You are going to church, but mom, I want to go to church. With you. I'm not going, you go into church. <laughs> Spiritual development. Okay, so we move. A Christian mother can be an inspiration to others in their spiritual development. Mothers are so important when it comes to that, believe it or not. not I'm not downplaying the fathers. I'm talking about the mothers today. Fathers, your turn comes in June sometime. A preacher reported once that before his first sermon, his mother handed him her watch. Now, it could be taken two ways when a person gives you a watch if you're a preacher. Okay. Let me tell you what happened in Port Alfred. You know, I got into the pulpit, I had my watch. It wasn't a glass pulpit, so I couldn't see my knees knocking or anything when I first got there. My watch was on my arm. And I'd preach away and get to, you know, halfway through my second point and I'd look at the time. And one of the guys in the church didn't like that. And I looked at the time. So he came to me and said, either you take your watch off and put it in the pulpit so you can see it, or we'll put a big clock at the back of the church. Big one. So you can just lift your eyes and you can see the time. Or you get a fright. Because something has moved a lot faster than you think. But, you know, one or two times come some clever deacons in the church went along and moved the clock forward 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'd be preaching away and suddenly I'd look up and I have to leave the third point because I'm looking at the time. If I go, take them out there after an hour, you know, I'm gonna, there's going to be roast pasta for lunch. So I've got to be careful. So I look at the time and wow, it's benediction time. Let's get out of here. The guys have moved the clock forward. So, you know, for safety's sake, you take one off and you keep it here and you keep that one so you can sort of synchronize the time. The beauty about preaching now is that you have an iPad and it has a time on the clock. You know, it tells me now it's half past nine. I've got a half an hour to go. Uh, or look at your time so to see what the time is. Yeah, yeah. So, his mother handed him her watch. She told him that whenever he looked at it, he should remember that every hour of the day she would be praying for him. Now that's a different thing. You thought it's going to be before the length of the sermon. She would be praying for him. And she also added that when he was to preach his first sermon in his first church, he should um, do something good for Jesus. He testified that his mother shaped his ministry with that sentence. Plus, of course, her beautiful life. A mother can also give inspiration for Christian service. By their very examples, mothers have served as an inspiration for Christian service. A minister told of coming home from college feeling, feeling rather skeptical about religion. It can happen. He noticed that his mother looked tired and worried. She asked him if he would take a meal she had cooked to a man down the street who was dying of tuberculosis. She also asked him to take a Bible, as she was not sure if the man was a Christian or not. The college son asked her what he should read. She suggested John 3. Anybody know what John 3 is about? Lows quiet. Anybody yeah. else? <laughs> Anybody know? Nicodemus meets Jesus, okay? That was me. I could have changed my name. After spending half the afternoon with the dying man, he told his mother he accepted Christ. Then he added that he too had given his heart to God. What a mother. What a mother to have the foresight to say, read John 3. Because if John 3 doesn't change your thinking on Christianity, nothing will change it. Jesus speaks there and he speaks solidly about being born again in water and spirit. If you're a good Baptist, you say, by baptism. <coughs> but that's not what it actually means, so we just let that ride through. I don't want to get involved in that conversation just this morning. Also, a mother can give expectation. A mother expects the best for her children. Sometimes this runs in material or social ways. But should it not also run in spiritual ways? I, can I say, unfortunately, I know some teachers there will have a go at me afterwards. Unfortunately, I taught for a year at a girls' school, teaching them accounting and commercial mathematics. 
And I can tell you without doubt that mothers want the best for their children. Because, boy, they come and they sort you out if you don't teach them kids properly. That timid little mother that hardly greets you in the street, let her walk into your classroom. If, you, if she thinks you've done her kid an injustice in the classroom and see what happens. You've had that before? Yeah. I didn't know that happened to junior school kids. Boy, oh boy. Mines, Senate nines and tens or grades 11s and 12s. Mothers care just as much. They want to rip the skin off your body. <laughs> Just because their kids are stupid. I mean, not the sharpest <laughs> tools in the, in the shed. Okay. <laughs> you're, you've just got to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, feedback's full, ma'am. And we just move on from there. You know, um, I don't want to fight too much. See, a mother can expect the very best also for her family spiritually. It's the mothers that tend to get the children ready for Sunday school. I'm not knocking the fathers. I'm not saying you don't have any place in this. Maybe that's where you've been. But I know in my house, it was my wife, not my mother, who got the kids ready for Sunday school. Well, she got them ready for school, for Sunday school, and everything else that they were going to be doing. But the greatest expectation is that each Member of the family knows Christ as Savior. That's a mother's greatest expectation. I had a grandmother, lovely Christian woman. She died in 1966. Wow, that's a long, what's that, 40, 50, 50 years ago now, nearly, nearly 50 years ago. I used to read the German Bible to my grand, never understood a word. But I could pronounce the words, and she said, read the Bible. And I would read it. Never knew what I was saying. But she did say to me that I pray for every single one of my children, and she had nine of those, so she wasn't quite as good as uh, Mrs. Wesley. She had nine kids. She prays for every single one of them, and she prays for every single one of her 18 grandchildren. Every single one is prayed for. And I am led to believe, um, I don't know for a fact, you know, I don't have all the information, but there are three of the grandchildren who are serving the Lord. Um, I'm the only one in a full-time capacity, and the other two are, are serving as elders in their churches and preaching a lot and stuff like that. I'm not saying the others don't go to church. I'm not saying that they're not saved, but I'm talking about who's actually serving the Lord. And I remember my cousin coming to church in Port Alfred, he lives in PE, my eldest cousin, second eldest cousin on the kick side, you know, you've got to always work out which side of the family you want. And he came to church, he sat there with his wife, and he was beaming, and he just said, imagine how proud Granny would be today. A woman's prayer for her family, for her grandkids, is vital. So my challenge to you this morning, before I get to the conclusion, is... Mothers, don't stop praying for children and grandchildren. Stop praying for many grandchildren. I'm not, that's not what I mean. Pray for them. That the Lord will work in their lives in a mighty way. That people, that your grandchildren will be transformed. You know, I became a pastor after living quite a, a life. And I've had the privilege of baptizing all three of my kids. And what a wonderful, wonderful way to go about it. My wife led them to the Lord. I baptized them. It, it, it's, it's special in your life. It's very, very special when you see what your kids are doing. One is so busy making pineapples at the moment that he, and he lives on a farm, so he battles to get into church as often as he would like. But the other two are both serving in their churches, one in East London, one in Port Alfred. And I'm just thankful that as a pastor, my kids have followed the same path through the prayers of the mother. You understand what I'm saying? The mother prays and the kids, and God uses those prayers and sorts those kids out and gets them going down the direction they should be going. And I just think it's wonderful. I don't pray for them to be a pastor. 
but pray that they serve the Lord in some way or another. So how do we conclude this thing? How do we put it all together and say, well, you know, you've spoken a lot about things. A mother is a person who can find full personhood in Jesus Christ. Always remembering that if you go back to the days of Jesus, a woman was a nothing in the household. She was a slave, equivalent of a slave. Remember that. <coughs> Remember where they've come from. And I know that in many countries, it's still like that. But I'm not going down that route this morning. What I want to say to you is that woman never stood a chance. And then Jesus came and said, but hang on a minute. There's neither male nor female. We are one in Christ. And suddenly a woman blossomed. Who were the people that were around Jesus? The woman. They were around him. Yeah, there were 12 disciples that were with him all the time. But the woman took care of Jesus. They, he had given them a new meaning in life. As a person who has found new life and strength through faith in Christ, she can then affirm her family, inspire her family, and expect the very best of Christian growth in them. Let's remember that this morning. Don't ever give up praying for your kids. Don't give up. 